I got two more questions for you. One, is there ever a role in Hollywood where you decided, nah, this is against anything I believe in, I ain't doing it? And what was yeah, it? I've done that before. I've done that before. Uh, there's a movie called Deep Cover uh, okay. with Lawrence Fishburne. And I turned down a part, and they, the producer had me come in and tell him why. And instead of hiring me, they passed on me and changed the stuff I complained about. Wow. Well, it changed because in the, in the thing, I was a dope dealer, and, and I didn't mind. I could play a dope dealer, but in, in the movie, you see me smoking a crack pipe, and you see a head in my lap giving me head, and then they pull back, and it's a little giving me head. I'm not doing that thing. You don't have enough money for me to do that. Thing, serious. Okay? And so I and so I went in and told them why I wouldn't do it. That scene wasn't in the movie when they did the movie. They pulled those ugly pieces out like that, gave it to another brother who went on and got the money. But I wouldn't do that. Certain stuff I'm not going to do. I'm not going to do anything that will embarrass black people. I'm not going to do anything that's going to embarrass my mother. You know, um, the most important thing in the world to me is that my mother and God are proud of me. So I don't do no bad stuff on purpose. If I fuck you up, I swear. It was a mistake. You know? uh, so, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I've turned down those parts. Wow, I mean, and I I don't have money, right? You know, I'm I, I mean I, I I'm okay, but I don't have the kind of money where I should be turned down parts. But I would certainly turn down a part if it makes black people look bad. Let me get your let me get your perspective on this then, because I've seen you um act out as women in roles before. What do you think about black men wearing dresses in Hollywood? Is it I, first? I think it's outstanding. Uh, I had a list. Wait a minute, hold up. I wish I knew you were going to ask me that. Don't go nowhere. Stay right where you are. You about to dress up? No, 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 no. I'm not going to dress up, but I will tell you one thing. You need to wear your mask, man. When you're in public, the, so what I did, I made my first mask. They got some drawers. I got a bad Because, see, if, if, you, if you do it with the drawers, first of all, the material is so cool. that it has to keep the fiber out. And you want to talk about social distancing? Don't nobody want to get next to you if your drawers are on your face. Okay, so, so I had a list that I had written. I wish you had prepped me for that. Of all the people who made money putting on a dress, okay? Yeah. And they want to make it like it's a terrible thing for black people, so they only, only want to name the black people. But Mr. Television, first guy ever did television, was... Uh, uh, Flip Wilson. No, no, before Flip Wilson. I'm talking about the white guys, man. Oh, uh, sure. Uh, uh, who was the guy? It was one, Milton Burrow. Who was Mr. Television when Television first started? He wore a dress. Uh, 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 Robin w Robin Williams got an Academy Award for playing in, in the dress. And I think it was Mr. Oh. Uh, um, I could name like just or some likes it hot. Top movie in the world. Both guys played guys who played like they was women because it was an all girl band and they needed to work. Uh, I can give you sixty cases of men who just had fun. Dressing up and playing like they was women it had nothing to do with their masculinity. It had nothing to do with who, who they are personally. We're actors. So I'm, I'm mm -hmm. acting. It don't mean I'm that part. It means I'm playing that part because it's theater. So I don't have no problem with that. I don't have no problem with somebody wearing whatever they wear that's funny to them, that makes them laugh. Around here, we do a liquor store hat day every Monday. When I'm on my show, you got to wear your liquor store hat, you know? That might be the one your mama used to wear when she went to church on Sunday. The hat break down. You usually get that, you know, when you go into a liquor store. Now, you know, in the, in the white neighborhood, they don't handle no liquor store. They have spirits, you know. Yeah. They have <laughs> store where you can get it in a brown pick bag, player. So if you play, and when we're actors, we're playing. So when you're playing, you play what the role is. You play the role that works. Wait a minute. I'm doing right now, uh, I have a series where I'm playing Gail King interviews. Because I'm shooting my first sketch comedy show I created called The Garage Show. And in that show, I first I did Gail King interview R. Kelly. So I played Gail King and R. Kelly. Then I shot me playing Gail King interview Martin Luther King Jr. Because he came back because he pissed off about what y'all did with his legacy. Then I played Gail King interviewing Kanye West. And it's hilarious. Don't look nothing like Gail King. I come out as an ugly bitch. I can tell you that. But I'm just saying. It's comedy. And in comedy, you go for the funny. If you're worried about what people think about you or say about you, you shouldn't be in the entertainment industry anyway. You should be, get, get a book, go teach something, you know, but you shouldn't be doing what we do. Would you say this is an agenda, though, to put the black man in that more so? Because, like you said, 
and that uh, that role of deep cover that you didn't want to do. So that had to come from somebody. Would you say that's like an agenda? Like, you know what? We won't get these black dudes to do this, to kind of demean themselves and put them in a situation where it could people could see it, like, you know, that it, that it, is, that it is making the black race look bad. I'm sure. I'm right. sure that some, some writers are conscious of right. writing in such a way that they can make us look bad, you know? Um, but at the end of the day, art, no matter what the form of art is, mm-hmm. whether it's dancing or singing or playing a musical instrument or acting or telling a joke, it all comes down to four words. Tell me a story. Tell me a story. How you tell your story is mm-hmm. what determines how people like it or love it or not. And now I'm certain that there are people who write stories to try to keep us in a dark light. This, this Once again, you're back to the, 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 stem, the stematic part of it, where they do things. They try to get more black men to go to prison, knowing that that's going to mess with a lot of black men's sexuality. You know, uh, it's going to pull us out of the system. So it's going to be less black fathers at home, less black men in the community. There are people who are set and think like that. I'm sure of that. But that's where your discernment comes in. Mm-hmm. Everybody's their own person. You have to do the thing that resonates with you. I'll have no problem throwing on a wig and a dress and talking silly. What I love Jamie Foxx. Yeah. You want to stop loving Jamie Foxx because he played Wanda? Hell no. He didn't just play Wanda. He played every musical instrument in the orchestra. He played Ray Child. He did everything he wants to do rich enough to pee Crane. You think I'm going to be mad at No, Jonathan Winters wore the dress. All, I mean, it's, I'll tell you, it's 10 times more artists that are white that did roles wearing dresses than black men. Here's what my real problem is. My my real problem is in my community, in the black community, we tend to tear each other down in judgment. You know, I did a show called Homeboys in Outer Space. I bet both of y'all are too young to remember that. I remember that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You remember that? Yeah, yeah. Homeboys in Outer Space was off the chain. That shit was funny. We had a space hoopty. I was the hustler. I came out in a full length coat. I opened it up. I had all kinds of shit to sell. I was like, brother man, brother man, brother man. NAACP hated it. The Hollywood branch shut us down. We barely made it through one season. How come it's got to be homeboy in outer space instead of brothers in outer space? How come it's got to be a space hooky instead of a spaceship? Snatched us off the air. White folks came up the next year with the same motherfucking show. Third Rock. From the scene, yeah. Yep. Yep. Motherfucking white people. Nobody ever said they were silly. Nobody ever said they were stupid on Hee Haw. Nobody ever said they were stupid on the Beverly Hill, Billy. No. They let them motherfuckers work and all become wealthy and tell their funny, corny stories the way yeah. they were going to tell them. I'm in a movie called The Princess and the Frog. Are you hip to that? Yeah, my daughter. I got a daughter. She love that shit. Your daughter love that. So how old is your daughter? Five. When she old enough, you let her know I was the cook. I was a chef at the counter that when she talking about she gonna get her own restaurant. Said, yeah, you gonna get your own restaurant, and I'm gonna win the Kentucky Derby. I started galloping around. Look, I started galloping around, smacking by my hand with a spatula. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so Princess and the Frog almost didn't make it, brother. Black people came out against it so tough. They didn't like the princess's name. We changed the name four times. They hated that we did it in New Orleans. They didn't like that there was a voodoo aspect. When I tell you mm. it is one of the flyest black animated shows ever with some of the greatest stars in it, but we pull our own selves down. White folks step back and let them tell that story. You just tell them the story. You know, you got friends. What is friends? Uh, living, so single. friends? living single. It's living single. Living so single. Nobody say anything to, to oh, white folks and they go ahead and get their money. Yeah, yeah. And we sit here scrutinizing. Wait a minute. He said nigga instead of nigga. <laughs> Y'all need to calm the hell down and release your sphincter muscles and let people go ahead and get their living on. But real men are not going to do things that, real black men are not going to do things that disgrace our community. We're not, we're just not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. I ain't doing that. I don't need money bad enough for that. And if I do, I still know how to rob a person. Plus, it's easy. Because <laughs> everybody got mad. Yeah. Word up. <laughs> Real talk. You know, so, so yeah. What else you got from me? One more question, brother. I appreciate your time. We're a little under an hour here with Michael Coy. A powerful interview. Yeah. We can do a whole hour. I ain't got no place to go and all day to get there. My man. Mm-hmm. Bernie Mac, what's the best advice you got from the legendary icon, Bernie Mac? Man. Yeah. Man. Friend. Bernie Mac 
was my friend, not just because he's a great comedian, and he was a great comedian, yeah. but he was a great man. See, he was a black man. See, black men are rare nowadays. Niggas, <clears throat> niggas everywhere. You can open the glove compartment of your car for niggas and all that, but <clears throat> black men, men who have integrity for their community, for their family, for their queen, for their God, very rare indeed. 